chemical processes. So far we have discussed first law of thermodynamics, second law of thermodynamics, concepts of enthalpy, entropy, internal energy. Now we will discuss free energy and free energy change. So what is free energy? Neither energy means enthalpy nor randomness factor alone can decide the feasibility of a process. The feasibility, whether the feasibility means whether the process is spontaneous or it happens. The feasibility of a process depends on the resulting of energy factor and randomness factor. So, feasibility. of a process depends upon resultant of of energy factor and randomness energy factor means Enthalpy, randomness factor means entropy. Enthalpy and entropy. So thus for deciding spontaneity or feasibility of a process, both delta H and delta S should be considered together. And, and the term which accounts the spontaneity of a process is called free energy. So the term, the term which indicates or denotes or denotes the feasibility or spontaneity of a process is termed as is known as is known as free energy gives G gives free energy
there is the h there is the g is the change in gives free energy delta h is the change in enthalpy delta s change in entropy S2 minus S1 
another form of walk function of expressing walk function. Delta A is equal to delta E minus T delta S where temperature is constant that is T2 is equal to T1 where delta is the increase in walk function and delta E and delta S are the corresponding change in internal energy and change in entropy respectively. Increase in walk function but decrease in gives free energy. Now another term is there. Suppose the change, the thermodynamic change is carried out reversibly at constant temperature T and let the heat absorbed by the system is Q. Then we can write Gives free energy. 
equal to e minus ds. Now, equilibrium condition. For closed system. So, we know that G is equal to G is equal to H minus TS and at equilibrium at equilibrium all state functions that means enthalpy change in enthalpy delta H is equal to 0 change in internal energy delta E is equal to 0 change in entropy delta and changing gives free energy delta G is equal to zero. A reaction is said to be equilibrium if delta G is changing free energy is equal to zero. And in such cases, the reaction can proceed both direction. So for equilibrium, for chemical reaction at equilibrium, delta G is equal to zero. Standard free energy. What do you mean by standard free energy? Standard free energy change is the is defined as the free energy change for a process at 298 Kelvin, means 25 degrees centigrade, in which reactants in their standard states and products in their standard states. So delta G zero reaction is equal to summation of standard state of product and minus total free energy change of the standard. Of reactant. Zero denotes the standard state. So standard free energy of formation. The change in free energy uh, when one mole of compound is formed from its constituent elements in their standard state is given by delta G0 formation is equal to delta G0 formation of product. Summation of total change in gives free energy of the formation of product minus energy change of the formation of reactants. The standard gives free energy of formation of an element in its standard state is zero as elements are found in nature. For that reason, standard gives free energy of formation of an element is zero. Now this is gives E is the most equation. So DG
G is equal to H minus T S. Now D G is equal to G H minus T T S minus S T T. From definition of entropy and enthalpy, we can write T H is equal to E plus P V. We know that enthalpy is equal to A E plus P P V. So we can write D G is equal to D E plus P V minus T T S minus S T T. So D E plus P D V plus V D P minus T T S minus S D T. Del G by 
at equilibrium delta g is equal to 0 so delta h minus t equilibrium delta s is equal to 0 so t equilibrium is equal to delta h by delta s So for isothermal process when temperature is constant at T, we get delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S at equilibrium. This is delta G is equal to 0 and we get this thing T equilibrium is equal to delta H by delta S. Now case 1.
then reverse reaction is spontaneous. Now case number 4.
function of P and T. As we know that G is extensive property, that means it depends on the amount of substance present. For that reason, if we take an open system in which quantities of the component may also vary, the free energy will depend upon the amount of the components. As G is an extensive property, so G is a function of P, T, N1, N2, N3, and so on. Number of modes. So suppose a system containing N1 moles of A1, N2 moles of A2, N3 moles of A3, then its free energy, we can say that G is a function of a P, T, N1, N2, N3, etc. And then we can write GT is equal to del G by del P at constant T, N1, N2, N3, everything constant dP plus del G by del T, P constant N1, N2, N3, dT plus del G first we we'll take L1 del N1 P, T, N2, N3 and so on constant dN1 plus del G by del N2 P, T, N2, N3 and so on constant sorry N2, N1, N3 and so on constant D, N2 and so on. So these are the term. So del G by del P G is equal to DG is equal to VDP minus is DT. So this term is V. We can write in this way. At constant temperature, density is equal to zero. So del G by del P at constant T is equal to V. Molar free energy. So this is called 
and partial molar free energy of component A2. So what is chemical potential? In thermodynamics, chemical potential is known as partial molar free energy. It is a form of potential energy that can be absorbed or released during a chemical reaction. It may also change during phase transition. The definition of chemical potential in IH species is mu i followed by mu i is equal to del g by del n i p t n n j. This is the partial molar free energy. So these partial molar free energy is called chemical potential. So mu i is equal to del g by del n i. At constant pressure temperature and n j where n j is not equal to n i. So it is partial molar free energy. So for when the pressure is constant when pressure, temperature, all other species con uh, and concentration remains constant, chemical potential is partial molar heat free energy and is written by this way Vtp minus Stt minus del G by del N1 Pt N2 N3 D N1 plus del G by del N2 P, uh, at constant uh, pressure and temperature with N1 N2 N3 and D N2 so we can write this at constant pressure and temperature. We can write mu1 dn1 plus mu2 dn2 is plus mu j dnj where these two terms are zero at constant pressure and temperature. Hence the chemical potential is the contribution per mole of each particular constituent of the mixture to the total free energy of the system under condition of constant temperature, pressure and definite composition. At chemical equilibrium or in phase equilibrium, the free energy is at its minimum. Hence, chemical potential at any equilibrium is zero. So, mu is equal to zero at equilibrium. So, what are the significance of chemical potential? A thermal system changes continuously in direction that produces decrease in chemical potential. So decrease in chemical potential means spontaneity. The chemical potential may be regarded as the quantity characterizing the ability of a given component to leave the given phase by any process. So it is called escaping tendency means any compound uh, its own characteristics to leave the system like in case of vaporization, in case of solution, in case of crystallization. So summation I mu I DNI for spontaneous process is always less than zero. At equilibrium, total chemical potential is equal to zero. Now what, what is the statement of third law of thermodynamics? of absolute zero. On Kelvin temperature, the absolute zero is zero Kelvin. The entropy of true equilibrium state of the system at zero Kelvin is zero. It is another statement of third law of thermodynamics. The entropy of a perfect crystal at absolute zero Kelvin is exactly equal to zero. But in practical purposes, this is this t is equal to zero when s is equal to zero. This is truly true only if the quantum mechanical ground state is non-degenerate. 
But if the ground state is degenerate, then at zero Kelvin also the value of entropy is scaled to zero, is very small but finite. So it is impossible to reduce the temperature of the system at zero Kelvin using finite number of processes. This is another statement of third law of thermodynamics. So according to the experiment, the heat capacity of solids approaches to zero, but not zero. Large amount of heat is extracted, but the temperature changes very less. And the lowest 